Hello my soccer universe, six days of Nations League action are over and I have to say match day two gave us a few frantic games, especially in League A, I'm looking at Switzerland against Spain, which was a real wild one. I'm also looking at yesterday's Netherlands against Germany, which was a really good game, especially for the first 50 minutes. Many chances created up and down, maybe defensively it was not so sound. Match Day 2 also gave us a whole host of long range shots to the point where I used to say this was a brilliant goal, it was a brilliant goal, but then I said brilliant goal so often that for all the videos that are shot today, I try to not use the sequence brilliant goal but you know long range shot blah 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 and even tone it down a little bit so i had to adjust my language because otherwise when we get to the match review section it would be brilliant goal brilliant goal brilliant goal but it was brilliant goal brilliant goal brilliant goal still the one for italy against france is the most brilliant goal of them all georgia continue their winning ways with a very impressive 1-0 win in Albania. They are riding a high wave and we might see them in League A come the next edition, which I think is pretty amazing. We also had some really good performances, for instance, by Greece, who got two wins in a row. We got a win for Bulgaria and probably one of the most interesting games nobody saw between Gibraltar and Liechtenstein, where Liechtenstein salvaged a very late draw. Unfortunately, you see, my country, Austria, is not up there. They lose in Norway. Big win for Norway and that one hurts a lot and there's a whole lot of soul searching at the moment post Euro where Austria performed so well and you know there was a lot of excitement around the team there still is however it also has to be said when I looked at this group I thought this is a group that might hurt Austria quite well because there's a lot of individual talent up front especially for Norway and Slovenia but also teams that will sit tight on the back to kind of take Austria's strengths away and Austria now for once the favorites and that's maybe not the role that they like. So there you go, add to it a whole host of players missing and it looks a little bit near, but you know, it's one point out of two away games, not ideal, but I still think if you win all your home games and then get the win in Kazakhstan, which is also not easy, you still have a good chance of advancing. And advancing is rather crucial for the World Cup qualifying because if you win the group, you at least get a playoff spot, more or less already because the World Cup qualifying groups they will be small groups but you will be in pot two and you need to be lucky to not to get a beatable opponent out of pot one so I am slightly worried because World Cup qualification that's the highest order for Austria at this very moment. Enough of Austria let's go into the games of match day two. After a second consecutive home win, Denmark are in a really good position of qualifying for the quarterfinals from their group. This time they beat Serbia 2-0 with two beautiful goals. The first one by Grönbeck was beautiful one-touch football, including a Yusuf Paulsen backheel assist. And Grönbeck takes two touches and puts it into the net. But it was Yusuf Paulsen 2-0 that after Christiansen cross, he basically kicks into the net. Denmark, really impressive start to their Nations League campaign. Spain were also quite impressive, but also had their touch of luck in the 4-1 win at Switzerland, a result that was way too high. Yes, Spain played well and Lamin Yamal, of course, was outstanding. The way he assists Coselo's open in the fourth minute was really great. However, was the ball really behind the line? That was a call by the assistant and not by goal and technology. Then Switzerland had a goal called off for a handball in the build-up. I would say a little bit contentious. Fabian Ruiz shortly after makes it 2-0 after Yamal sent Nico Williams, who saw his shot parried, but Ruiz taps in the rebound. And then a red card for Robin Lemont, last man. And finally, the luck started to fall a little bit Switzerland's way, who can put back a goal just before the half. There was also a good save by Raya in there. You thought that Switzerland might be pushing for the equalizer, but they were caught on a counter-attack twice within three minutes in the 77 80th with Fabian Ruiz and Ferran Torres sealing the deal. Spain with 10 men looking quite good, as you would expect. Group A1 was a case for the 39-year-olds. First, Croatia win against Poland thanks to a brilliantly taken Luka Modric free kick. And then over in Lisbon, Scotland had a 1-0 through McTominay. However, Portugal were of course the dominant team. There were some brilliant passing moves again in there. They have that in them. One of those, Rafael out from the left, 
pulls it back and Bruno Fernandes takes it from the edge of the box into the net and Portugal were pushing, it was a momentum shifter. In the end it is who else? Cristiano Ronaldo who had come on at halftime who taps in the win in the 80th minute for his 901st goal. Portugal also off to a good start. France got their bounce back win at home in Lyon this time against Belgium. It was a 2-0 win. However, I would argue for the first 20 minutes Belgium were a better team, created a few more chances. However, then in the 29th minute France took the lead after Kanté played it over to Dembélé, sees his shot parried and Colomiani taps it in from a short distance. Mbappé was this time on the bench. Before he came on, Dembélé with a brilliant shot inside the box second half made it 2-0. Mbappé then came on, had two chances but looked a bit like a foreign body in the French team. In any case, they get back to winning ways. But on the other side, one can see that there's a little bit of a leadership problem in this new French team, if you would like. Then over in Budapest, Italy had a little bit more trouble with Israel than they had with France, curiously enough. However, they still took the lead, were the better team overall. This time it was Moise Ken starting up front, who plays it out to Di Marco, cross in, and Fratesi chests it into the box. Fratesi is now the top goalscorer under Spalletti. He's not even a striker. Fratesi was very instrumental also in the second goal, when he plays the ball to Raspadori, Moise Ken, and makes it 2-0. Tonali had a goal, this of offset very late on. Israel put one back, but Italy with two away wins very much in control of group A2. In what was a really weird jersey matchup, Bosnia Herzegovina managed to hang on to a goalless draw in Budapest. However, all eyes were in Amsterdam where the Netherlands met Germany and they played on a really intense, entertaining at least first half 2-2 draw. The Dutch struck early in this one when a goal kick was chested down by Broby towards Kravenberg who then finds the gaping hole in the German defense sent Tijani Reiners who makes it 1-0 and then actually the Dutch had quite a few chances early on especially Xavi Simons saw a great one saved by Ter Stegen. Germany had a hard time finding back into the game but it went then in an up and down phase. Germany got the equalizer when they pressed the Licht and in the end it's Dennis Undorf that converts a rebound and then a a little bit against the run of play. Joshua Kimmich made it 2-1 just before the half. However, the Dutch came right back when Broby assists Denzel Dumfries. And it is 2-2. The game then fizzled out a little bit. Nagelsmann was not happy that very late on a promising attack for Germany was interrupted by the final whistle. Looking at the standings in League A, we have now Portugal on top of their group ahead of Croatia, Poland and Scotland. Portugal will probably easily go on to the quarterfinal. I think Croatia will also make it out there. Italy very much in control. Two away wins to start their campaign. Now they need to back, back it up, but Italy very likely going into the quarterfinal and probably France will join them. Germany and Netherlands, the class of their group, it's those two teams. It's just in which order will they qualify. Denmark looking very, very strong. I still would think that Spain will win in their group. We can also look now who are favored to win the Nations League overall. Yes, it is Spain with a distance. Then Portugal, Germany, the Dutch, Italy and France are all in one big packet. And then let's see who will round out the top eight. Denmark, Croatia, probably that sounds about right if you were to ask me. When we come back in October, here are the fixtures for League A. The two standard fixtures are, of course, Italy against Belgium, must win for Belgium if you were to ask me, but also Spain against Denmark. It was quite a disappointing evening in Oslo for the Austrian national team, losing 2-1 away from home to Norway. And especially the lineup, 4-2-2-2, did not really work well, especially in the first 20 minutes. Norway were much the better team, took every advantage of that unusual lineup. They took the lead through Murray in the ninth minute and always had trouble with Sirloth, Odegaard and all the attacking options that Norway had. Curious enough, Erling Haaland was very well kept but that opened up spaces for the others. However then, Rangnick changes it around, goes to the 4-2-3-1, that is usual, and suddenly Austria were dominating the game and got the equalizer through Savica with the first real shot on the game, it also has to be said. But Austria were then very much in control, and so even at the beginning of the second half, second half that was very even, Austria had the better at the beginning. However, we also had Mvene walking on the edge of a yellow-red, so he had been taken off in favor of Querfeld, and at at that point the Nusa had come on and really gave the Austrian right side loads of trouble. Norway invested more, created more chances. Kruse also Baumgartner with a foul on Oedegaard seemingly has injured Norway's captain. He had to come off but that did not detract for Norway who in the 
28th minute scored a winner after Gunderson crossed through Haaland. Initially was given for an offside, but Querfeld had his heel a little bit too far back. It counted. At that point, Seidel and Autovic and Stöger for Austria had come on. Especially Stöger gave a whole lot of new impetus, but Austria cannot find an equalizer. I think overall, Norway invested more and deserved their win. In the parallel game, Slovenia beats Kazakhstan 3-0 on the back of a Sheshko hat-trick. Very one-sided affair, that one. After drawing their opening game, Wales and Turkey got the expected wins in the second match day of their League B group. Turkey took an early lead through Aktyokoglu, however Iceland equalized just before the half time, but then it's Aktyokoglu again who gets two more goals to complete his hat-trick, give Turkey the 3-1 win. Over in Podgorica, Wales had scored the first two goals within two and a half minutes. Kiefer Moore and Harry Wilson with a really nice shot from outside of the box. The game was wide open, plenty of chances left and right. Jovicic, for instance, hit the crossbar with a shot from halfway. Kiefer Moore missed an open net as well. In the end, Kamai pulls from back in the 73rd minute. However, Wales get the win. In his 100th cap for England, Harry Kane scores a brace to give the three Lions a 2-0 home winning as Finland. A win that was never really in doubt because Finland didn't produce much. It was one-way traffic, but it took until the 57th minute when Kane takes a really hard shot onto the bottom of the crossbar and into the net. And then late on, he converts a Madueke cross to get his second goal. In the same group, Greece beat Ireland 2-0 away from home, are level on points with England, and it was actually quite a convincing performance by the Greeks, who might be a challenge in this group. The first goal came from a really nice Ioannidis shot from outside of the box, where he really picks his corner, gets the goal in, and then very late on, another Bacacetas assist, assist and Solis with a really hard shot to the near corner, make it 2-0. In the duel of the two match day one winners, Georgia actually went to Tirana and completely bossed the game, having plenty of chances in Karashvili with a great shot from the outside of the box in the 71st minute, who give Georgia the 1-0 win. Fully deserved that one. While over in Prague, the duel of the losers ends with a 3-2 win for the Czechs. Highly entertaining game. Great goals in there as well. Especially the opener by Schultz. Or great volley by Jesse Down. Puts it in. Vana then equalizes in the 37th minute for Ukraine. Schultz again re-establishes the lead for the Czechs. The Czechs had more of the game. Went and 3-1 ahead with a late penalty by Suchek. However, Sudakov managed to pull one back. But Georgia are very much in control of this group. With two wins, they are set on course for Nations League A, Albania, Czech Republic, Ukraine, rather even with the Czechs probably having a slight advantage. Greece and England, both on six points in that group. It will be one of those two teams advancing. Most likely it will be England because England is just better. But I think I would even like Greece in a playoff against the third place team if it is the right one. It has to be said. Greece doing good things. Group B3 is wide open. However, Austria are not the favorites to advance anymore. You have already a three-point deficit. Turkey and Wales, similar like to Group B2, those two teams will decide amongst each other who will go on to League A and who will go into the playoff. On match day three, the big match in League B is, of course, England against Greece. England hosting this one. I expect it to win this one, but you know, there's a little bit jeopardy in there. We also have Norway and Slovenia the two leaders in their group ahead of Austria. Austria definitely need the win against Kazakhstan. And then Czech Republic against Albania. That might already decide who will go up and who will go down, at least in the playoff. Under coach Iliev, Bulgaria now eight games unbeaten and they have their second win yesterday with a 1-0 over Northern Ireland. Fully deserved win. They had plenty of chances early on in the end. It was the Bulgarian press that interrupted the Northern Ireland build-up play that got intercepted. Kolev plays to Despotov in the 40th minute. It is 1-0 for Bulgaria in Plovdiv. In the same group, Belarus got a 1-0 win at Luxembourg. In a relatively even affair, I would claim that Belarus had a little bit more of the game. Romiko with a shot from the edge of the box made the winning goal. Over in Group C1, both of the favorites got their wins. Slovakia in their new Macron jerseys took the lead through a Duda penalty and then Asterelec got the second one shortly thereafter and then they saw it out for an easy win over Azerbaijan. While Sweden on the back of the two star strikers, Jukares and Isak get an easy 3-0 win over Estonia. Also all the goals in the first half, Jukares opens it up. Isak then uh, in the 40th and the 44th, Jukares adds a third. After losing the opener at home to 
Romania. Kosovo came back with a 4 0 away win to Cyprus. With that, Morici scoring the opening two goals in the second half, Rahmani and Delova adding two more. In Bucharest, Romania get their second win under old new coach, if you would like, Michele Lucescu. Mihaila gave them the lead early on against Lithuania. However, Lithuania were really well in the game, creating multiple chances, getting deserved equalizer before they have could even take the lead after the half. It is then a late penalty, a foul on Haji. Then Marin then converts to make it 2 1 in stoppage time. It is a 3 1 for Romania, who have now six points from the opening two games. In League C, Latvia get a deserved home win over the Faroe Islands, playing curiously enough in white at home. The winning goal came in the 64th minute through Varslavans. However, then there were a few nervous moments at the end, but as I said, it was a deserved win overall. And also, Northern Macedonia get the win over Armenia with a man less, because Saikov got sent off for two yellow cards in a very short period of time. He was arguing with the referee, but still, the Macedonians, much the better team, Bardi with an individual long range effort makes it one and then Miofsky gets a second one just before the end of the game. Northern Macedonia set to go directly to League B with this win. As expected, Sweden and Slovakia lead their group. It will be between those two who will go up to League B, who will go into the playoff, Azerbaijan and Estonia, just to avoid the playoff, I would say. Then Romania, very much the favorites in their group, ahead of Kosovo. Bulgaria have now a real shot at advancing to League B. They lead their group. However, it's also a rather tight one with two teams at four points and one at three. Belarus actually look quite good, I gotta say. And North Macedonia have now the inside track into League B. As for the match day three fixtures in League C, there's only one that really sticks out and that's Slovakia against Sweden. All the others, there are interesting ones in there, but Slovakia against Sweden, that's the one that I would actually favor over many other fixtures in the other leagues. After being embarrassed in San Marino, Liechtenstein go to Gibraltar and leave with a 2-2 draw in a really, really wild game. Gibraltar took the lead through a walker Olympic corner, if you would like, in the eighth minute. However, then a builder play error is used by Saglam to get an equalizer for Liechtenstein. Walker then sees his penalty saved by goalie Büchler, while Gibraltar then really thought they had the winner when in the 97th minute Scanlon gets that go ahead goal. However, another penalty is given and Hasler converts emphatically in the 14th minute of stoppage time. And lastly, Malta get a rare away win at Andorra. Coming Zuli scoring the goal just before half time. There were a few chances for Andorra then coming in the second half, but overall, Malta were good for that win. And after match day two in League D, San Marino fans still can frame their little table because San Marino is still top of the table. Yes, they will have then to play Gibraltar. Avoid defeat, and you are, after two games, still first Gibraltar are still expected to advance from this group slightly ahead of San Marino, of course. In the other one, it's all Moldova, Malta and Andorra, only for a playoff spot where they probably have minimal chances of being promoted. In League D, we have the flag classical between Moldova and Andorra, same flag almost, and Gibraltar hosting San Marino. All eyes will be on that one, I'm sure. So those were my thoughts on what happened in the Nations League on match day two. I have heard often the complaint that this international window comes a little bit too early because the leagues just got underway and to a degree I agree however I really like international fixtures I probably would venture that it would be better to make a three-week break from the leagues let's say in October and one maybe in late March early April so to have everything condensed and then we can focus a little bit more on the domestic leagues and also the international window and I also would say there should be a summer international window so reduce it to three make it longer we'll also allow the teams to gel a little bit better that's what i would venture for let me know your thoughts on this idea and also let me know your thoughts on what you saw in these games give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more i'll talk to you soon but more things in my soccer universe hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day Bye.